<clears throat> and we want to look now at uh, verse 22 through 24 and in advance the title the work of forming and conforming the work of forming and conforming all right so luke 15 verse 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be to be merry <clears throat> so there is this place when the father sees his son there has to be a connection with the altar there's always, because what, what did Paul say? I am determined not to know anything among you but Christ and him crucified. If that's for me, I'm not here. Uh. <laughs> so, um, there is this there is this eternal connection because we find Jesus in eternity being called lamb, slaughtered lamb, sitting on the throne, Revelation chapter 5. And we see everyone worshiping the lamb. They're not worshiping the one who got up out of death, uh, the king. Check it out. The, the word lamb is used for Jesus in the book of Revelation 22 times. And it is the final book. And there they could be saying, you know, blessed be the king who rose. But look at the words. It's important because they connect him to the altar. Blessed be the lamb who was slain for us, who gave himself to that degree for us. God is blessing the unselfish nature of Jesus in the midst of horrible, horrible abuse and misuse and what have you. So the father, soon as, I mean, he blesses his son, he, he honors his son, but then he, is, he takes him to the altar. And there is the true manifestation of the things that are real in God's heart. Now we see that all the way back in the Old Testament. We see that when God decided to come down. Okay, so so you've got you've got um, um, Noah. You got all those going along. Then you got Abraham, and you've got all these people who worship God, but he was up there. <clears throat> but Moses comes along. And God says, I don't want to be up here. I want to be down there in you. Because that's where, what the tabernacle was. It was. He was right there in the midst of them, in the midst of the people. He wanted to be in the midst of his people. And that was just a, a type and a shadow, a, a, a pattern uh, for the truth that was about to come. And so we see again, we referred to this uh, a week ago or so, Hebrews 8, 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. And it's talking about the tabernacle here. But this is the New Testament telling us, informing us, that when God wanted to be in the earth, he wanted to be in his people. And when he wanted to be in his people, he wanted that temple. Aren't we the temple of God? Yes or no? Yes. We are the temple of God. We are the fulfillment of what that was. God said, um, for see, saith he. Well, let's, let's go back. As Moses was admonished of God, and I want you to notice the words admonished of God. And we discussed this, that he's talking about the tabernacle and his son dwelling there. So this is the father speaking. Even though it says God here, we know that it is because the father is declaring his son, just as the son declares him. When we begin to know God, when we begin to know the father and the son and the Holy Spirit, we can recognize them. 
do you, if somebody told you about somebody coming here and you didn't know them, you may, you wouldn't recognize them. But in knowing them, we can recognize them in scriptures and we can say, that's my father speaking there. That's the father who is declaring his son. As was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, can it get any clearer? We're, and, and he's saying that we're that, we're that place where he wants to dwell. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown thee in the mount, shown thee that's eternal from above, that we're bringing down to the earth. Okay? But if he's going to come down here, he wants his habitation ordered a certain way. And that ordering all reflected him in them. I mean, he was literally in the Holy of Holies, amen? But he wanted everything to reflect him. And there was an order and God is admonishing and saying, I want you to see to it that you make it according to the pattern. There's a pattern son. There is a son who is the pattern of all of this. And that son wants to live in you. Okay, so we said that, that, we, that, that the father wants us to be formed after his son, after the pattern of his mind and his heart concerning his son. That pattern is Christ crucified. That pattern is prodigal son, you have the son in you because you're in the family. Let's go to the altar. That's where it's going to begin, and that's where the fellowship is going to begin. That's, see, and we say we fellowship with him because we're saved and everything, but his fellowship, fellowship's in the son. Again, we quoted this last time. John wrote, and he said, I write these things that you might have fellowship with us, but... Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son. And that's that fellowship. Okay, So we can fellowship on the basis of, thank you for healing me, right? Down here, me, me doing this fellowshipping. But, the, but Jesus, you know, isn't thanking the Father for healing him. Uh, there is, a, there is a relationship and an understanding of their nature that involves an altar of self-giving that they fellowship in, that they live in, that they think in, that they, that they uh, recognize in one another, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so he says, uh, he's admonished of God, of the Father. Make sure you make this according to the Son. So, um, so there is there is a part that we play in that, but that part begins with seeing. Moses, see to it that you make this according to the pattern that you've seen. You have to see this from the Holy Spirit. You have to. You have to apply your heart and say, Holy Spirit, you know, open, not the word, open the heart of the Father concerning his Son and change my heart. Because if he opens the word, we can become deeper life people and we can know all kind of stuff, but the patterned Son doesn't live in his temple. The, the, the Lamb doesn't live in his temple. He's not enthroned within us and so um, so that's that's the pattern that he's talking about so um, Galatians 419 says this my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you he's talking to Christians he's talking to the churches of Galatia Galatia wasn't just one church or one city, but many in an area. And he's talking to the, all of these churches and these groups, and, and he's saying, I travail. I cannot just sit back 
and just say, well, it's all good. I mean, everybody in the church seems happy and people are giving and, you know, people are doing good. And when people talk, it sounds right. <laughs> you can't do that. He says, I, I am in travail. This is deeply affecting me because I know this is what God wants. This is what the Father wants concerning his Son. Christ formed in you. And he's seen that pattern and he can't shut up and he can't, he can't take it lightly. Can you, can you see that that would be the case? I mean, he didn't say, and he was really, you know, interested in, you know, he says, I, I travail in birth. And he says, I'm determined, excuse, I can see, see Paul, excuse me, but I'm sorry, I'm determined not to know any of this other stuff. Right. Well, you're so, you know, you think you're so special and so, you know, because you, you know, you've grasped, no. That's what the, is in the Father's heart. Christ and him crucified. And that's what he gave himself to. And God chose out of all the people that got saved and preached then, God chose that guy, Paul, to write most of the New Testament because it declared what was in the Father's heart. All right, so I wrote down not just a work of the church or of your commitment, but it takes the Trinity. Now, how many of us have thought of that? <laughs> oh, I'm really not involved with the Trinity. I, I'm pretty much, you know. Let me see if I can just run through this real quick because I think we're getting low. Nine minutes. Nine minutes, okay. Um, it takes the Trinity. The Father will declare to you the pattern son, the, the lamb, the, the son that is in his heart and that he wants formed in us. He will declare that, but we have to leave, right? We need to get up and leave the hog pen. We need to go to the Father's heart, make a straight line, beeline to the Father's heart. And you say, well, how do I do that? You just say, Father, I just want to block out as much as I can everything else and I just want to hear from you. Speak to me. And, but then you say this, about your son, the one you want formed in us. And he'll run. <laughs> you won't have any problems. But if you're just going, well, I just want to know Jesus. I just want to know Jesus. Or I just want to know Christ in me. I want to, and he's just going, you know, you know you do, you've grabbed hold of some doctrines and stuff, and that's where you're sitting. You not really after my heart and the son of my heart. Yes. probably still smelled like the hog pen and thought like the hog pen, but he left it to go to the Father. It's not that you leave it somehow magically, you're perfect. We're not talking about that. Okay. So the Father, he's the one who declares this son because it's the one of his heart and nobody else's. The son is that son that is to be formed. Make sure it's all made according to that son that you saw up in the father's heart. And then the spirit works with the materials that we give him. Okay, so is it important to read the Bible? Yes. Uh, is, this, is it important that you... Um, become a Bible scholar. No, that would be the exact opposite of what we're talking about. Uh, I remember when I was in Bible school and they were saying, well, you need to come to a revelation of Christ. And I'm going, y'all won't give me any time. I mean, that, we work constantly. 
And so finally, I just said, I said, uh, and I was, I was angry that they, they were telling me to seek the sun, but not giving me time. And so I finally just, you know, uh, after somebody said, you know, I finally got to sit down and get some time in the word and say, hey, we need a work detail to go do so and so. And I just go, can't you find somebody else? And finally, I just said, okay, Father, this is not, I know this isn't the spirit of Christ in me, the way I'm responding. I know something's wrong here. So I said, I'm going to do everything they tell me in the right spirit, but I'm going to ask you to, if I get five minutes, I'm going to ask you to fill it with your, with your spirit and with the life of Christ. And he's done it and he's continued to do it to this day. It is amazing. But who would believe that? But I know. I know. Well, Deb goes, <laughs> she knows. So he works with those, the materials that we give him. The main material that we can give him is to say, I give you my heart. I don't even know what that means. I don't know how to do that. But I want you to, to begin your work. Okay. So um, in Exodus, and you don't have to turn there, but let me just read this. Uh, Exodus 31 Verse 1 through 5 says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works to work in gold and silver and brass and, and in cutting of stones to set them and in carving timber to work in all manner of workmanship. This guy, the people brought their gold or their silver or whatever because I don't know if you remember the story, but they all pitched in to build this tabernacle that, that Moses saw in the mount. And God raised up Bezalel, which is like the Holy Spirit, who has the spirit of all of this. And he has the wisdom, and he can, he can do all kinds of stuff. And they give it to him, and he works with the material they gave it. And before too long, things that were earrings, or things that were this or that, or all these different things that they had, it's a temple. It's a tabernacle. It's a dwelling place of God. See that you make it according to the pattern, but you're going to need Bezalel. <laughs> That's uh, Exodus 31, 1 through 5. So, made according to pattern. You, you can't fully do that, but you can commit to it. You can commit you can commit to certain things that you know are not the sun, and I think it'd be better to give up religious stuff than sinful stuff. Uh, here's why. Jesus ran around with the sinful people, but the people that were religious, he continually rebuked because religion hides his face. And sin, you know, people say, well, you're separated from God. Well, you know, since you didn't just get saved, but you're one, you're still his, and he, you can find your way back home like the prodigal. Okay? It was the elder son that we never heard the end result with because he was religiously, this is, you know, it's the way it is. Um, so, made according to pattern, the, the reality is above. It is above us, and it's above. Uh, we must begin to fill our hearts with the reality that is above so that the pattern is seen in earth, in earth, okay? So uh, how much, one second? Okay, one second. Um, man, I've got a lot more on this. No, we can't, we can't do that. Okay, so just on a real basis, you know, anybody ready to arise or get up and, and say, I, I don't even know how to head your direction, 
but I want to head your direction, Father. I want, I want the Son in me the way you want him to be, not just to get saved, ask the Son to come in and say, okay, he's in there. Because, again, Paul prayed for the Galatian churches. You're saved, but the Son is not formed in you. The pattern is not there. You haven't even looked at the pattern from above, much less brought Bezalel along and say, hey, take these things and the Holy Spirit, he knows the Son. He starts building and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. And again, we can't take any credit. So, you know, to arise, to get up, to leave the hog pen of our own understanding, even if it's very spiritual, at least in our eyes. And then to make our path not just to the Father's house, but to the Father's heart and trust the guiding of the Spirit to get you there. And then trust that when, when the Father begins to open his heart, you're going to see the son of his heart. You're going to see it with an altar. You're going to see it with the best but it's not going to be yours. And you will understand, oh my God, this is not about me, it's about him. This is precious now, instead of vile because of my filthy hands involved in it. So if, if you feel that way, then I'm going to pray and you don't have to come up here, but you just, you just bow your head and, and uh, just acknowledge what we're saying here. Father, you're heart is for this son to be formed in us, to be alive in this temple while we are just the vehicle of your life, Jesus. And Lord, there is in each of our lives a hog pen of wrong ideas and religious concepts and and so many things that are actually hindering us. And your Holy Spirit is the only one who can get us from the hog pen to the Father, because that's a long way off. But only the Father can begin to reveal the Son, to whom the Father will reveal him. And Father, that is not given to the wise and the prudent, but to babes who are just hungry for the reality that you want and not the religion that we live. So there are those in this room right now that are willing. Some are moved already. Some are turned on on the inside. Some are still dull, but, but at least they're, they're saying, point me in the direction of the Father's heart. All of these are better than staying in the hog pen. <laughs> so Father, move by your spirit and let us see the face of the Father and the hands of the Father and the altar that he takes us to. Let us behold the son that you see and let us make merry and fellowship with him over it. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're dismissed.